All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is the Right Services YouTube channel. I'm Audrey Knapp, founder of the Right Services and the author Transformation Alliance. And today I'm interviewing Nydia Pastoriza of SazzyReader.com. Um, she is not only an avid reader and a, an inspiring novelist, but she is also an experienced graphic designer who works with um, authors to create beautiful, unique covers for their books. So, she also just provided an exclusive masterclass to the Author Transformation Alliance, um, where she actually covers the anatomy of a book cover. So it's a really great class. Um, if you're an, a member, hopefully you've seen it already. And I want to thank her so much for speaking with us today. And Nydia, so to get started, could you just introduce, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are, your job title, and how that relates to um, the work you do every day? Sure. Um, like I said, it's, uh, I'm Nydia Pastoriza. I've been a designer for roughly about 10 years. Um, and I kind of, in the past 10 years, I've had the opportunity to help different types of authors, more on the business genre than anything else. But in the past two years, I've really gotten to um, dig in with, um, you know, with self-published authors and indie authors. And I've learned tremendously um, from indie authors because it's it's have forever changing. It keeps growing. So as authors learn, I'm right alongside with them. You know, learning the do's, the don'ts, what's new, what's you know what doesn't work anymore. You know those kind of things. So but that's pretty much it. I'm in the Charlotte area in North Carolina. So if anybody's in this area, you know, hit me up. I'd love to to meet authors and and you know have coffee with them and that you know. I think authors are pretty cool people. So, um, but yeah, so, and that's pretty much it. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so cool to know that, you know, you got started recently, but you know, it adapts, it evolves. Things are always changing and we need to be up to date on those changes. Mm -hmm. um, and then can you tell us about like what really sparked you to get into graphic design for authors, indie authors like you have in the past two years? Well, it I, I love to read. I mean, I've been reading since I was old enough to, to, to read a book. I've always had a book. And I think probably since ebooks became pretty, um, you know, became user friendly, so to speak, um, I probably kind of, my, my reading time tenfold because I have my books with me at all times. So, um, and from there I've gotten, um, before I even started working with indie authors, I went to an event, I met a author and kind of became friendly with her and um on social media and she had an issue with her designer and she asked me she remembered i don't know even how but she remembered what i did and she asked me to help her out so we did and from there i was like you know she was like you should be doing this because you're pretty good and I was like, well, I don't know. I've really, really never done it. She's like, you're perfect because <laughs> this is what this audience is. You know, there's so many new people that don't know. There's so many um, that it, even though you don't necessarily know the business, you're a great designer and you follow directions well. Like if, if an author says, this is what I'm looking for, you come up with several concepts that are pretty much spot on. So you, you will get the hang of it. And sure enough, I started doing pre-made covers and kind of selling them on consignment and eventually started my own website. I have um, started doing my own photography, so to kind of help with copywriting. I have three models now that I'm working with um, and, you know, I'm slowly getting more. And I actually just hired a, an illustrator because I do more photography myself, but I see a lot of need for illustration. So uh, I just hired an illustrator. He's coming up with some pre-made book covers for, for me to put up. So I'm excited about that because especially like in the fantasy genre, there's some pretty cool illustrations out there. So that's pretty much, you know, I started with the, with the covers. Then I got um, asked about formatting. So I started doing that. That's something that as a designer, we know how to do anyways. And then it, we've gone into marketing, you know, banners, social media graphics, and it's kind of evolved from there in the past two years. So. Oh, wow. And so you do formatting too. Recently in Sprints and Spirits, we had someone post questions about formatting, mm -hmm. um, but she's written a children's book and she is having trouble with the formatting. So have you done like formatting for children's books and like what kind of genres um, have you done formatting for? 
Well, I've done formatting um, for business, obviously, because that's what I did for corporate. Um, but I've never done for uh, formatting for children's, but I can tell you I've done for cooking. I've done a lot of uh, like recipe books and workout books as well. And that, that is, you know, normally I do fantasy. I've done fantasy. I've done romance. I've done horror. Not my favorite. I'm not going to lie because <laughs> I have to read through it. And sometimes it's pretty scary stuff. But, but um, and I know it's tricky with the children's and like the stuff that has um, pictures and illustration, especially on the digital side because it's not what we call a reflowable um, EPUB or an ebook. Um, so it is a little tricky. Um, and I've, I would think that on the children's book genre, would, a lot of the same would apply that I applied on the cooking, because we have images and the type is very, has to stay the same format, you know, like when you're listing ingredients. So you kind of are trying to follow a flow, maybe with a kid's story. I mean, I got tons of books because I have an eight-year-old. So I would imagine is the same. So it, it is a little different. It's a little bit more complex. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more costly as well because it does take a lot of work. Um, but it, it can be done. I mean, like I said, I've done the workout, like fitness books and the cooking books. Those tend to be kind of in the same type of format, which is what they call a non-reflowable uh, mm -hmm. e-book. So, yeah. And what does non-reflowable mean? Non-reflowable means in the e-book world, um, when you have a, um, a regular book, like a romance novel, you open it on your e-reader, your Nook, your Kindle, your iPad, and it kind of adjusts to the size. You kind of determine the font you want to use, the size, if you want the background to be black or white, um, you know, you control as the reader, you control all that. So if you need it to be really large, you make the font really large. You can read on your phone, on your iPad, on a tiny little Kindle. It's all, you, you control what it looks like. Non-reflowable means that it's, you got to pinch the screen to get yeah. up close and see things. The font can't, or the type, the content, the story, you can't, manipulate the size of the font it is said so if you're reading a book on a phone it's you're going to have to pinch to make it larger to be able to read it so you know i i advise authors especially kids book and there's some really great kids book on ebook because like i said i have an eight-year-old and we have tons of those books and i don't you know he reads it on an ipad i don't think we've ever read a e book for kids in my phone because it doesn't come across well you yeah. know what i mean so yeah, definitely but but you know most kids have ebooks or or you know nooks or kindles so it, it you know it works out it works yeah. out but it's a more controlled environment so to speak for the yeah. non reflowable you know ebooks yeah i totally get it because it's the same thing if you upload a pdf or put a pdf mm -hmm. on your kindle you know you can't adjust the size you have to you know that's touch like, screen to do it that's so. exactly how it works i mean you as a designer i have obviously control of how it's gonna lay out the cool thing that it does do is i know like on ibook and I don't think that this applies to Kindle. You know, they're two different worlds. Unfortunately, they haven't managed to marry those two. But um, they have on ebook, you can literally click on an image and it makes just the image bigger. Mm -hmm. um, you can still search by words like you would on a reflowable because the content is still regular text. It's not like a flat graphic for the most part. Um, so you can search by word and you can kind of look at the pictures larger. So, <laughs> um, but you can, um, that, that's like something on ebook that's pretty cool. So like with my son, he rather look at books on iBook than on Kindle because Kindle doesn't have that feature that he enjoys. So, um, but it's a, it's a cool feature, I think, because the kids can click it and it expands the graphic yeah. and you can do it in two different, like if you have... He has a book that has a chicken and a pig because it's a farm. 
type yeah. of book and he can click on the chicken and it pops up and it's yeah okay kind of thing so that's a pretty cool thing but the concept is it's a control environment versus the reader controlling it yeah definitely got mm -hmm. it and then um what do you enjoy most overall um, when you think about working with authors, working with indie authors and getting you know, their book covers created or their books formatted? What is it that you enjoy most about working with authors? What I enjoy the most about working with authors is, you know, I love when they tell me this is what I'm looking for and I can bring that vision to life. Um, sometimes I haven't even read the book. I just have the synopsis and the, or the summary and they give me some feedback. You know, this is what I'm looking for. You know, and when I send a couple of different comps, normally I send two or three and they're like, oh my gosh, I love it. That, I love that interaction um that's why i try to do um interact with my with my authors my clients uh, not just via email i either talk to them on the phone if they're national like in the u.s because i have some that are um overseas in england and australia but even chatting on facebook with them you know that interact i have that interaction with them it's just not real just uh shooting back and forth an email, you know, just yeah. sterile like that. Uh, but I love that when they get that, oh, yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. And even sometimes they have an idea in it. They're, sometimes they can be very specific. This is what I want. And it, sometimes it's hard. You know, I have one author that she, she wants the Eiffel Tower. And I'm like, I can photograph just about anything, but the Eiffel Tower is going to be hard without me going to France. So we went a different route getting stock image, but we were able to do it where she still had her couple in the picture, and but they were facing away from the camera. Yeah. So she was very specific on what she wanted her, her two people on the cover to look like. And that's hard to do sometimes. You yeah. Know? So it, it's, um, but I can give them that feedback and say, you know, why don't we try this? And, you know, maybe this will work better. And sometimes they don't see it, but they don't, they, when I tell them they can't picture it, but once I give them the design, they're like, oh, that's perfect. You know, that interaction that we can take their story and put a, a face to it. That's probably my yeah. part of what I do. Yeah. That's so great with that vision. Like you can see the possibilities that sometimes mm -hmm. authors can see. It actually kind of reminds me of the two brothers who do the real estate. Like, um, you know, one's the agent mm -hmm. and the other one <laughs> fixes the everything. Yeah. And like one guy can see all the potential mm -hmm. that the potential homeowner, homeowners can't. And um, of course, you know, that's what it is in being an expert is being able to see all these different possibilities and and give that advice and that support so that's fantastic there's so yeah. many parallels you know yeah um, and then now with um, the master class you just cr created for the author transformation Alliance um, you know what for you was your favorite part of creating that well um, I, I think the just the being able to share something that I think a lot of authors don't understand. Um, one of the things that I mentioned briefly was in the publishing world, traditional publishing world, you don't have, um, you, as an author, you have no say on your cover. I mean, I learned that um, uh, early on. I had the, the privilege of working with somebody that was in the publishing business for a long time. And that's one thing that I know. Um, and that's changing a little bit as, you know, the indie self-published world grows, but it's still kind of the case. And the reason why they do that is because they know what the reader wants. They know they've done homework, they've spent a ton of money researching, and they know. And it's in their best interest for people to pick up your book and read it. Hands down, that's what they're there for. So a lot of times, as authors, we want to put what we think. And, you know, I, being able to share with authors, yeah, what you want is important, but there are so many different people out there that are looking in different ways. You know, there's people that only read romance. There's people that want to read new things. So you have to think, what is my reader looking for? Who are the people I'm targeting? So you've got to think outside of yourself, sort of, and being able to share the, you know, different ways that an author can go about that was you know that was pretty cool because I, I get a lot of even 
authors, uh, self-published authors that have done four or five books or a series, they still come to me with questions or doing things that I'm like, that's not, you know, I think that if you do it this way, it might work better. You know, I try to tell them if you're doing a series, maybe you need to invest on doing a um, photo shoot that encompasses a different, a, you know, a handful of images that you can use throughout the series and you can use through marketing, that kind of stuff. You know, they get, they get so focused and I understand I'm writing my first book. So I understand being so um, consumed and so involved with your book that that's all you see. So when I step in and I can give the advice from an outsider, you know, you got a great story, lovely. Now let's put it in the hands of people. Yes. And let's get people to find it. And, you know, and sometimes that looks different than what you think it's going to look like. And it's okay. Ultimately, we want people to read your story. So, exactly. Yeah. And being able to share different ways to do that was, was a great experience to put that together. And we appreciate it so much. And, you know, I think that really is important to touch on doing the market research. There was just a really great thread in um, 20K to 50K books. It's a, a group on Facebook mm -hmm. um, about, um, you know, who somebody asked, is anybody here making 10,000 or more a month with their book sales? And actually a bunch of people responded. Mm -hmm. And one of the unifying thoughts um, or, or methods was one, marketing and mm -hmm. two, doing the market research because yeah. um, even fantasy and young adult or urban fantasy, all these different authors from different genres, mm -hmm. even a romance, which people, a lot of people say is oversaturated. And it's, mm -hmm. But anyway, they were saying that they wrote to market. They found out what people wanted to read in that genre mm -hmm. and they wrote something that they could enjoy telling a story about, They, you know, a story that they enjoyed, but in a way that readers were looking for you yeah know? and that's there you have a lot of people on there making more than 50,000 a month with yes. their books which is just insane but at the same time that's phenomenal success and they have you know that kind of that wisdom to offer market your work and be when you're writing it right to market mm -hmm. yeah. so and that's well, phenomenal I even just talking about um, the the cover too what does your market enjoy seeing yeah well, and, and, you know, what they enjoy seeing, and I see covers that have entirely too much information. I, I say one of the things I mentioned in the class is you have three seconds to get somebody's yes. attention. That is it. It is a proven fact, three seconds. And, um, and it's not even like you're in a bookstore where people can pick up a book and put it down. I mean, literally, they're moving. They, they have, a, a, you know, a... a yeah revolving images going I click on an arrow and they keep moving 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 yep what is it that's going to catch their eyes um we want to if you're a well-known author then your name should be huge on the cover. yes I see that oh, I want my name to be and I get that but if I don't know who you are what's going to get my attention is the title of your book yeah <clears throat> see what other authors in your genre are using for uh title yeah you keep it relevant to your book the top 10 in your genre yeah. on amazon just look at yeah. them see what are they doing yeah. what are they doing mm -hmm. right and and you know and understanding how um amazon you know how they sort things understanding that aspect of it is a huge part of marketing um which i'm learning when i help authors you know upload their books through create space and the kdp and all that understanding on your ebook you can put data, metadata in the back end of yeah. your book that can help people find you quicker. I think they, they're so anxious, and I get it. You're anxious to get your book out, but understand what it is that's going to get that book up there mm -hmm. and, and do it. It takes a couple of hours of research, yeah. um, and it's information that you can find quickly. Yeah. You know, so what's better to get it out there and have it sit or to get out there and people actually find it and read it and of course purchase it. Yeah. So yeah, and, and something to remember that I think um a lot of authors tend to do too. Um as a designer, you're going to nine times out of ten, you're gonna hire me to do your ebook cover, but also to do your printed cover. Mm -hmm. And your printed cover it's tricky because it mat you know the trim size and the number of pages and even the color makes a difference 
So, you know, you can, a lot of designers will be happy to get things ready and say, let me know when you're ready for that big cover, but try to get as closely as you can to the time that you're ready to print. Because, you know, I get a lot of um, books that are, um, and the same things with goals with formatting, get a lot of covers that I, I have covers that, that I sold last year, like March of last year, that the author still hasn't told me how many pages she has in the book. <laughs> Which is great. I mean, she she knew what she wanted and she kind of went with it. But that is something that you're running the risk that that, that um, designer disappears. And yeah. Where you're going to get your cover from. I mean, God forbid nothing happens to me. But the, <laughs> the matter is, you know, try to make it as closely as possible to when you're ready to print or when you're close to knowing it's formatted. Um, my, it's edited, it's formatted, and I know that it's going to be between 300 and 310 pages. You know, yeah. that, those 10 pages are not going to be a huge difference. But, you know, if you started with 200 pages and, or 300 pages and you talk to your editor and, and now it's 280 and then they formatted it and your formatter, when they were done, it, you know, narrowed it down to 150 because you'd be surprised because of the trim size and why not um now your book cover you're calling your designer well i'm uploading it to create space and it doesn't fit well you told me 280 and you're down to 150 yes that's why so it's yeah. that kind of thing that you know understand what your designer needs in advance i think a lot of people don't they just go well this is what i need and i know it's um we don't know a lot of people just don't know yeah. You know, I get people that go, do you get my ISBN? You know, that's something that you have to get. People try to use the same ISBN number for um, their ebook and their printed. Is it yeah. the end of the world? No, but it makes it harder for people that are finding your EPUB and using your ISBN. It makes it hard for them to find it. So it's, I tell people, don't even put an ISBN in, the, in there if that's the case. Just yeah. one for your printed version and that's it. Yeah, and thank you so much for providing our members with, you know, the information where they can get that. I love how they give such a great deal on 10 of them. Just buy yeah. 10 all at once. And you even said in there, buy, you know, buy multiple so that you can have the correct ISBN for each version of yep. the book so yeah i mean a lot of people are starting to do audio yeah. too with their books and now i think recently it used to be that the only way that you can get the audio if you were through create space i think or K kdb was through their system but that's getting ready to change too which ibook is loving yeah they can provide that service too and there's a couple of other companies I and mean, i don't know the whole details because obviously i don't do audio books but i stay up to date because it affects the people that i work with and if i know Absolutely. the information i'm happy to provide it that's wonderful yeah <laughs> thank you so much and then do you have any final advice for authors as they're getting ready to create their book covers or if they're trying to do it on their own if they're shopping for a graphic designer or things like that well if you're doing it on your own um be mindful, I said this in the, in the class, be mindful where you get your, your pictures and your images from because again, like your work, that's someone else's work, intellectual work. And so the same way you want people to respect your work, you should do the same, you know, in that field. That's number one. And you don't want to get in trouble later. You don't know if your book is the next, you know, Harry Potter. You don't know that. And you can find yourself in a pickle if you're using an image that you're not supposed to. So that's number one. Um, you know, know, understand when you go to stock images, you know, iStock and know what they're selling you the image for how many, um, how many times can you use it? Because there is a limit. Um, you know, understand that if you're going to do it yourself. Uh, if you're going to hire someone to do it, know, you know, ask questions. You know, I, I'm happy to provide anybody that calls me, you know, if they say, where do you get your images from? Um, how do you use them? Do you use them again with another author? Um, you know, those kind of questions you should be asking. Yeah. If, I know I think 
Canva now has the option of you can literally create a ebook cover. Yes. On there, you know, understand that if you go that route, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to get the same cover printed. So, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, I was doing a little bit more research after one of our conversations about mm -hmm. it. And with Canva, um, they actually explicitly say, you know, if you buy a photo from them, like you're going to use it on your cover, mm -hmm. they even say it's a one time use, right? Mm -hmm. Just this one instance is what you can use it for, yeah. for example. And then um, for Pixabay, now their, their um, photos are all uh, free for commercial use, no, um, no, like citation, no credit required. Okay. You don't have to yeah. get credit, you know. but they say you have, cause they, they put it out in layman's term and they give you the full legal version yeah, of course. and the layman's term says, but that does not mean it includes a model release. So if you're using something with somebody's face on it, you have to be aware that they could come back and say, Hey, I did not authorize you to make money off mm -hmm. of my image. Now, if you cannot make the face out, then, you know, you're supposed to be okay. So yeah. Well, and, and but that's what I mean, understanding yes. what you're purchasing. Exactly. It's an investment. And if you're serious about your writing and you're serious about getting your stories out, these are things that can, you know, work against you later on. Exactly. And if you know the information up front, then you can move forward um, and, and know what you're getting yourself into. I, I have a, a author that she published her ebook and now she's ready to go um, print. She, that's where she got her cover from, Canva. And she's like, well, if you go on Canva, and I said, well, the problem is the Canva version that's not going to print well. So what do you mean? It means that it's not going to print well and I can't use that image as a designer. I can't and I won't because I got to protect my reputation yeah. as well. Yeah. That's the one. And number two, you know, you're going to print it, you're going to get your proof and you're going to be unhappy with it. So mm -hmm. before I try to take your money from you because of the sake of taking your money, I'm not going to do that. Um, so you can either leave that and get a new cover, which different cover, which I don't recommend, but that's where you are right this point. Or we can just redesign the whole thing and you just put a new cover out for both. Yeah. I think she paid for the image because on Canva you can pay by credit. Yeah. You know, I, and I, she's like, well, I already paid. Well, I'm, I'm not going to take your money to use a Canva image because yeah. I'm not allowed to. And it's, not and it's only a dollar an image. So. Yeah. And I, but I told her, I said, I'm not. And I didn't even know because although I've used Canva in the past, yeah. What I normally do is I use my own image. It's yes. Them. The safest bet, right? That's it. Um, you know, and you don't have to just know what you're doing. If you're going to use the post, I see a lot of people doing teasers. That's awesome for that. Yeah. I think it's great. You're getting your word out, but then I see them taking that image and running with it in a different medium. And that's when the problem starts. Yeah. So understand that know where your designer is. A professional designer is never going to say, oh yeah, you can use that as long as you want, because we are trained to know that these are copyrighted and how we can use them. And that's why I've started doing photography myself. Yeah. I don't have to wait and see that. And, and they change. They're constantly changing. I stock changes their, their um, legal terms all the time. Yes. Getty changes. And it's all. on you. It's yeah. on the person getting the image to it's know, true. to be up to date on the changes. So you have to go like every day and, you know, check them well, out. And they, they email you. Um, yeah. They kind of email you when they have changes because I have accounts with, you can imagine with all of them. Yes. Yeah. But you know what? Most people just delete it. They don't read it. Yeah. It, in nine times out of 10, they will honor the agreement they had if you bought a picture three years ago. But if you bought a picture three weeks ago, right. you need to know what the law was when you yeah. bought it. So that sounds like so much risk. Like, because if you do market, you write to market, you market your work well, and then it goes wild, it sells like wildfire, then if you have the, a bad image, you could get sued and all that success could be dampered or completely negated. Well, by and, legal troubles yeah and it's well, so much to navigate so much trouble yeah, to navigate it's not it's not working the other part of it is you don't know how often i have almost skipped over a book 
that I was going to buy because I'm a consumer, you know, because I have another book that has the same couple in the exact same position. And it takes me a second to go, oh, that might not be the right, the same book. So, you know, you run that risk when you get stock images, when you um, use Canva, when you use, you know, any of these that they're going to, there's other authors, even they can use them in other things, but you're going to see it possibly with another author. And I see that all the time. Yes. You know, I've had authors that go, I just noticed that I bought this pre-made book cover and I saw another author with it. I state that on my website, my pre-made book covers, probably 90% of them are um, from stock images. So there's a possibility that they're going to be used. I have whatever the laws are and I take responsibility. If I sell you an image, I know when I bought that image, what the, you yeah. know, what I can do. And I combine it with different things. Sometimes I have four images or four graphics within one composition. Yeah. You know, so that's the other thing. So just understand, no, look at the design. Don't overload your, your cover. You have three seconds. What do you want your reader to find quick? Yeah. It should be front and center and see how your eye moves through the cover. If your mm-hmm. eye is moving first to the title, the, the author, they're not going to have time to get to the title. So if your title is what you're trying to get across, I mean, if you're Nicholas, K, uh, Nicholas Spark and, hey, yes, you want them to see your, your name yeah. first if you're at that level. But I don't think a lot of indie authors, they're getting there. There's some yeah, yeah. popular, but if you're new, you know what? Get them to buy your book because of the cover. or Based the, on title and image. Yes. yes. And then once they read your book, because once I read a book that I love, I go and I follow that author on Amazon. So every time that author puts something out, Amazon tells me. You yeah. Know, yes. They encourage your readers as you they start interacting with you to follow you on Amazon. I know. <laughs> Every time you put out a book, Amazon will let them know. Yes, because it's in Amazon's best interest to make sure that they know. Absolutely. So they use those things that they give you, you know, tell your readers, go, you know, we ask for reviews, which are great. Reviews are incredibly important, but tell them to follow you because once I read your book and I love it, I follow it, I follow you, but I'm reading for my, for what I do, I read probably 10 books a week sometimes. Yeah. But personally, for my, per- like for pleasure, I read three or four books. And, you know, so I'm, I'm exposed to a ton of authors. If I don't know you put out a book, I'm not going to go buy it. Yeah. But because I follow you as soon as you put out that book, or right when it goes up for pre-sale or pre-order, Amazon tells me. Yeah. So, that's wonderful. That's a great tip there too. Yeah, yeah because it, I don't think a lot of authors realize that. Use those tools that I go to authors pages on Amazon and there's no picture, no bio, no nothing. Oh, yeah, that drives me nuts. Lost oh, opportunity right there. Yes, yes. Take the time to fill that stuff. Now let people know who you are and what you love about the stories you write. They want to, exactly. it's a, such a personal thing writing, I think. Yes, yes it mm-hmm. is. And we are so excited for the Q&A section next week. Everybody's going to have um, great questions for you. So um, that's, you know, members only, uh, Author Transformation Alliance. Mm -hmm. I burned my tongue during lunch, so I'm having trouble trouble here. But anyway, um, so Author Transformation Alliance members get the live Q&A session, and we can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you so much, Nydia. And, uh, you know, sazyreader.com, S-A-Z-Z-Y-R-E-A-D-E-R.com. Check it out. Check out Nydia. And if you would like to uh, join us in the Author Transformation Alliance, you can find that link and our links um, below in the comment or in the description, okay? Thanks, everybody. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye.